the mayo. It's time for Mike Mayo's Lunchbox. Find out what's being served with Mike, Defoe, and Luby, the only show that covers food, sports, and the proper maintenance of your car. And now, a man who had the distinction of having an entire health clinic named in his honor, Mike Mayo. I want the flim flam sauce with the awesome bay with shafafa on the side. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another Friday edition of Mike Mayo's Lunchbox. And today we're coming to you, as usual, from our Friday fun spot. It's also going to be our Sunday fun spot. We're exactly. going to spend a lot of time here this weekend. Jeff Defo DeForest, we're at 10 Palms Gulfstream. How are you today? Couldn't be better, man. Feeling great uh, in the company of, uh, I mean, wonderful people here. You got Luby back from the Dominican Republic, Holy Sammy Sosa, Mayo uh, <laughs> looking good now, Svelte as Tony described, and, and the great Tony Segreto. How much better can it get? Am I looking Svelte, Tony? Is this true? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's okay. what Tony said. I was doing well this week, um, and it's funny. I'm on some you know, new medication, new lifestyle changes. My appetite has been curved, but last night I... Uh, learned a a little bit of a lesson in that some other substances don't mix with my new lifestyle because it overrides the medication and i went on a <laughs> so so in other words you had something you shouldn't have had right a little bit just a drop just a touch just and, to kind of you, you know you got hungry i got more than hungry i ate, i demolished <laughs> like everything in my fridge at 11 o'clock <laughs> And it's weird because all week I have not been hung, feeling any kind of hunger at all. Um, uh, you know, even, you know, having a little bit of meals and just portion control. Uh, but last night, for whatever reason, well, we know the reason. It just kept coming. I just kept eating. And then at about like what, what two order, hours later. What order did you have it in? I, well, you know, the order. I mean, earlier in the evening, I had a little, you know, I was... Uh, you know, you have ice cream medication. and then ice cream and then a sandwich. Well, it was a cannoli that I got from our newest sponsor, <laughs> Stromboli, and that started the whole downward <laughs> spiral. And it's a damn good cannoli. They filled the shells with the cream that they get from Mimi's Ravioli in Hollywood. I'm talking about Stromboli's in the, the plantation. Uh, 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 what's it called? The fountains. The fountains. The fountains. fountains. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had that. I brought it back after taking some photos and. Next thing you know, I'm eating some leftover pizza and some leftover Chinese food. And two hours later, I'm doubled over in pain, and the medicine just kicks in again. And it's like now I've learned my lesson. Like, don't do that. Oh, you actually were in pain. Yeah. In oh, pain. that's interesting. I woke okay. up in the middle of the night, a little bit of pain. But anyway, um, Defoe, what's happening today? Are you got any plays of the day in terms of horses or? I'm food? all in uh, on the Moses Malone pick three at Aqueduct. Okay. Which would be fo fo fo. I nice. went with the fo, the fo, and the fo. First three races. So uh, I'm hoping that comes in. Uh, I just made a brutal mistake here at Keeneland and conceded the race to this two to five shot, uh, even though uh, the seven was going to be my play. So what I got totally screwed there. I got beat by a nose, and otherwise I would have had everything. So uh, that's the story. What, yeah, what came story. in at Keeneland? I did not 78, play. 78 Seven, for breakfast. 78 I'm hoping to see the inquiry objection sign, but uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't know unfortunately, Mr. Trump, we're not going to be able to delay the trial. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, How I about am that trial. I, I, well, let's. There's uh, nothing happening yet. I was talking about how, uh, you know, the man needs his Diet Coke, obviously, and some of the memes going on out there. You know, I, it, I mentioned it yesterday is that when you are knocking your opponent for being sleepy, Sleepy Joe. That's your nickname. Yeah. You have one job, and that's to remain awake at all times. <laughs> He's falling. Are you still sleep. buying that two fifteen? Oh no! Yeah, yeah. I mean, the two fifteen was uh, the weight. Yeah, that. I mean, uh, look, or, I'm not seeing two fifteen there. Or, I'm seeing, oh, I'm or is that seventy five? I don't know. <laughs> is the two fifteen the weight or the real golf score? Uh, exactly. Uh -huh. the man hey, maybe the guy can hit the ball. I don't know. If you're in a scramble, would you take Trump on your team? No, Jesus. no, you wouldn't. No. Uh, he has a great foot wedge. That's what I hear. The best. Uh, <laughs> the best club in the bag, and it's He's not even a, in the bag. It's he, on his uh, I'm body. sure it's an excellent foot wedge. Yeah, All right. I don't even want to go down this path. What I want to do is cash a ticket. I've been in this kind of funk in terms of uh, my handicapping is good. And, and you know, they had this pick five carryover here yesterday, which was $125,000 into the late pick three. There was a couple of food horses in there. One was named Chicken Parm, which finished off the board in the first leg. But I... 
I came close because in the second leg, there was a horse named Cabernet, went off at 10 to 1, and he whistled. Uh, I had three out of five, including Cabernet, but I got knocked out in the first leg. I had Luca in the first leg, and he finished second, Luca Panici, our uh -oh. friend, friend uh -oh. of the show. And next thing you know, um, you know, that that pick three with basically three favorites came back thirty three hundred dollars for a 50 cent bet. Pick five. It was. Yeah. And, uh, you know, anyway, there's money to be had anywhere, but not in my pocket. You'll come around. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Sunday, you know, Sunday, we've got to get you a winner. Yes. Shouldn't Tony do a, a handicapping seminar sometime before? <laughs> like, will you assemble the people a half hour early and just get Tony, like he was Andy Byer up there? No. Handicap the whole card for everybody? No? Well, I'm going to give my uh, Tony usual no. Tony Robbins pep talk and get the crowd motivated and all, like, stoked, and everybody's going to start, you know. Uh... No, it's always inspiring, Tony. You haven't seen this yet. <laughs> you wouldn't expect it of Mayo, because he's usually a little down about everything, you know, like, you wonder what's wrong with Mayo, how come he's so sad, what's, uh, what's the story, and then he gets up there in front of people all of a sudden it's like jim neighbors singing where you're going wait a minute where'd this voice come from it'd be like finding out susan wallman was an accomplished opera singer uh but he gets up there and it's like a different guy it really is amazing i what can i say i guess uh I, I, i'm a um Good public speaker, maybe, but not necessarily with a headset on. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little tongue tied here, especially when we got a great array of food in front of us. Um, we're at Ten Palms. We're oh. going to be back here on Sunday for our. Brunch it used bash. to be quarterly, but you know, we we just say it, the occasional seasonal brunch bash, or as one of uh, our friends uh, Ken Rosenblum dubbed it, the uh, brunch box. Uh, so brunch box. Uh, yes, the lunch box brunch bash, also known as the brunch box. Sunday, it's uh, basically too late. If you wanted to come now, I'm not going to let you come because the deadline was come today. Come on, Mayo. How about some tickets at the door? Give me a break. All right. I'm sure Joe, Beja, and crew, Tommy, uh, I gave them the final numbers. Well, well preliminary final. If you want to come. You don't think yeah, Joe Beja could Email make some me. adjustments? Make right. but I mean, this guy is a brilliant uh, restaurateur and uh, food uh, you know, uh, management uh, type. And I would think if some people showed up, they say, I want to see Tony Segreto. I didn't know about this till Friday. They'd be welcome here. If you want to come, email me, Mike Mayo eats at gmail.com sometime in the next 24 hours, and I'll add you to the list. But uh, anybody, well, you guys know because I told you. I was kind of shocked and pleasantly surprised. Thank you, everybody out there, especially in Let's Eat South Florida land. Uh, the final, not, well, the preliminary final count, 53 people were over the 50 mark. That's what I wanted to do, including... 29 paying guests, which is uh, nice. We've got seven. You got 21 freebie artists? No, we've got. <laughs> <laughs> There's five of them or four of them right here, yeah. No, that would be 20. Well, actually, we account for more. We account for eight all the guys. 24 and 29 paying, 24 on the comp list. But most, seven of them are contest winners. So, again, they pile up. You got to use those contest victories within a three-month span. And uh, people were smart. They said, maybe we'll wait. We'll have a all-star affair, which we're going to have this Sunday. We're going to be here from 12. I'll be here till about 4 o'clock. You can stay here all day with the all-day brunch buffet. If you want to join us, it's just the discounted rate of $44 plus tax and gratuity. You get a free mimosa. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a really fun time. We got uh, some large groups table of seven the coach clan uh there's three contest winners in that bunch we've got the uh law johnson clan that's my girlfriend she's bringing a whole bunch of family and friends nice paying seven and uh then we've got uh you know we're gonna be here too we're gonna have some fun we're gonna hopefully find some winners i didn't look at sunday's card yet it's one race at a time hopefully yeah, exactly. i can get some and again i played some cold daily doubles here and an aqueduct, so I'm trying to hit the early double for a change here. I will be distracted during the show. I uh, will uh, be craning my neck at some points. But meanwhile, let's get started. And um, let's get started. I'm, I'm totally lost today because I was busy all morning. Well, well, let's start with a, a game tonight. Oh yeah, the Heat. The Heat play tonight, so that's that's a good jumping off point. Thank you. And a lot of people are looking to jump off maybe a bridge or a pier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this is Mr. Heat fan right here, Mike Luby Lubitz. Uh, I'm tripling down. You well, only two people win? know more about the Heat than Luby, and that would be Scoop Skolnick and Ira Winderman, Winderman, two of your contemporaries sure. at the Sun Sentinel what gives for many you, years. Yeah, what gives you any confidence now with Jimmy Butler down and out? 
And with Tyler Hero looking like anything but a hero the other night, he was terrible in those last few minutes when the game was in his hands. I mean, he was actually. We, we oh, found out. He, he he what are you talking about? He was making everything. He played his best that, in the last like, half of the fourth quarter. Yeah. He was horrendous the first three quarters. And that's why there's like a joke Luby, going out now. We know when NBA games are decided in the last two minutes. Oh, did that you last, see what he did in his last blocked. three? He, he yeah. was horrible. He made some big threes early in the fourth. Yeah. But he ended up being the guy who was had the ball in his hand. He was mm-hmm. the closer. And you know what? He ain't no closer. No, I don't know. So, I mean. Look, I, I, I'm not as confident as it was when you and I were in our text chain. Was I still in DR when we were doing that? Yes. Um, no, Butler was going home. to play. Um, and I thought they'd get through either that game versus Sixers or they'd be either the Bills, the Bulls, I'm sorry, or the Hawks. Um, I still think they get by being that they're at home. Uh, again, Hero and Bam out of bio have been guys that have gotten contracts, have gotten money, have gotten a lot of acclaim. And a lot of both of them have shied away from the big moments in the playoffs, you know. So without Jimmy Butler, it'll be on their shoulders. And I'm having confidence that. They take advantage of that. And also the Bulls don't have Zach Levine. So it, and it, Caruso is either not going to play or he's going to be hampered. So I think at home versus a Bulls team that is well under 500, I think they can find a way to get a win. And then I think they get demolished by the Celtics. Like that's where I, I stand. Well, earlier this week, I went on record saying that the Heat were going to drop back-to-back games and get shut out from the playoffs. They look better I than I do right you. now. <laughs> I agree with you. They – they, And, yeah, Chicago – but. Is Atlanta that bad? I mean, Chicago put a shellacking on them the, uh, the other night in Chicago. I know it's a different story when you're they're, on the road. They're, they're two and two against Chicago. Okay. So, you know, give them a home court advantage, but but I don't know how much of a home, home court advantage it is without Butler. I guess it's a matter of trust. At this point, do you trust Bam out of Bayou and Tyler Hero and, no. you know, the other cast members to come through when – Jimmy I'm Butler. going on Devo's favorite Dolphin song. I'm wishing and hoping. I openly admit that. Like I'm definitely Dusty wishing. Springfield time. <laughs> wishing and hoping, hoping and praying. One of my favorite sports songs. They should play that when they come out on the court. <laughs> that describes me at the poker tables a lot lately. I was uh, in deep in a tournament last night. How you been night doing got, that? Well, I got knocked out 15th. They were paying 10 and 106 people in the tournament, $6,600 on the line at the dog track. It's a good value tournament. Uh, the place just up the road here. I call it the dog track, even though there hasn't been a dog race in like five years. They outlawed that sport. And, Is that uh, how long it's been? Five years? I believe so. They've totally, you know, ripped out the uh, racing oval there. They're getting ready to put up condos and other kinds of townhouses in another strip. Uh, that property is now owned by the Sofer family, the same family that owns the Aventura Mall, the Fountain Blue Hotel. Uh, meanwhile, we are off on the first race here, right? And uh, yep. we're going to see. I, I'll see who I'm rooting for later. But I do have, uh, I think, the uh, six and the five. You need so. the six right now. He's coming like a rocket ship. Okay, good. I got the six uh. in some of my key doubles here. So Ooh, This horse uh, is nine to one. He's going to win thrilling. for fun. Good I, job. I, I, well, with, oh, don't, don't. he's nine to one on the six? Yeah. Get out of here. I thought he was going to be much the best. Come on, six. Oh, he's All good. right. He's I'm like you. Good, yeah. I got six or five. <laughs> five good. is 20 to one. Hey, we're at the track. Oh, what my God. Uh, I've turned into. See, Indulge. there you go. Your Indulge. whole fortune just turned around. Well, we haven't won the, the double 20, yet. $20 I'm alive horse, with the friend. two and the three in the next race. So <laughs> I, I would I would double up, double down on that thing. Uh, I'd go anyway, ahead and press it. I'm press sorry it. for that unprofessional Hank Goldberg. So they, they're clamoring for the trivia, by the that way. That was very so Eddie Kaplan-esque. Are they you know? clamoring? Are the people – give the people what they want. Yes, That's, they're already asking. This is what I've learned. Sure, sure. Enough of the dilly-dallying. We're heading into a great weekend. Uh, we've fun. got uh, – uh, yeah, it, let's just get to it. It's yes. time for the Lunchbox. Is it sacrilegious to eat a meatball with chopsticks? I've done that is before. Is the Italian-American and- society going to – Gonna cut me down on social media. What do you think? I'm with Tony? you. Yeah, I'm I believe you. that you have derided me in the past when I ate several things with them. Well, you took it to like chopsticks. a level where yeah, we're yeah, eating, you were eating like soup eating with like chopsticks. Cake. I mean, come on. And you were trying to eat soup, I think. How about a meatball with a knife? How about there that? Go. Let's go for it. I would just stab that. Yeah. Oh, oh wait, I got distracted from the contest. But, yeah, there you yeah go. they're yeah. ready for the contest. <laughs> There's a contest right. coming from uh, Mayo. Brunches, the brunch bash contest. You're gonna email the answer to this week's restaurant trivia question along with your horse selection, numbers 1 through 11, for this week's contest race, which is going to be the fifth race on tomorrow's card. And then you're going to give me the tiebreaker pick, which is going to be, drumroll please, 
the winner and margin in the Knicks 76ers game one. That's going to be tomorrow evening, wow. 6 p.m. Knicks 76ers game one of their NBA playoff series. I figure nobody wants to predict the Celtics versus either the Bulls or the Heat, but no, um, no. Uh, there is that big I, I hope Lakers. You, horse in exactly. oh, you could have done the, your favorite matchup, the Panthers and the Lightning. Game one. How about the over under in the Panther Lightning game? Why don't you make that one of the tiebreakers? You're tie the Mr. Panther yeah. Lightning. You actually they'll nailed be, that one years be, ago. There'll be at least it. five goals in that game. But no, we're not going to do any hockey picking because the margins are either you know by one goal. Well, actually, maybe uh, you know I mean, what? You're just later doing the on. Score. Never winning winning never. side. I mean, you put them in the drum. The score. All right. Uh, now I'm getting totally be friggin easier to be the Here we go. All right. Um, <laughs> all these people, all these chefs in the in the kitchen. Here we go again. The contest race, fifth race, golf stream tomorrow, 11-horse field, 60,000 60, maiden special race, scheduled for five furlongs on the turf course, post time approximately 3.15 p.m. And, uh, again, if everybody, if, if multiple people have all three elements right, we go to a tiebreaker drawing on Monday's show. And uh, here we go. For this week's contest, I think Defoe and Luby will like this, in honor of Passover – also known as Pesach. Yes. We salute a bygone Jewish eatery in South Florida that specialize in a product that is most definitely not kosher for Passover. Again, not kosher for Passover. Here we go. Number one. This longtime Hallandale Beach favorite for bagels, lox, breakfast, and deli sandwiches was located a pumpernickel's throw from Gulfstream Park. And it permanently closed in March 2020, weeks before the COVID pandemic shut restaurants around the globe. Classic gathering place. place you know this. For all, I mean, you, you have to love a, a Jewish deli that sells a racing form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you who <laughs> and I walked in there. Bagels were amazing. I they love had the joint, that, that, racing honestly. forms, you who's <laughs> Martinelli's apple uh, juice. They really sold racing they forms. They had everything. Yeah. That's and, classic. And, and that place was classic. Yeah, it was great. Um, and oh uh, I used to bring pick up some bagels when we would do the morning the, show. Yeah, on yeah. yeah. forty. Yeah. I would bring yeah. a few bagels out to uh, Defo, uh, and we would, uh, you know, have ourselves a, a nice little time. They're the same. What's that? No, the two sushis are the same, I believe, yes. So, uh, I forgot what it was called, though, Luby. What is, what is this one? Because uh, we want to order that every time. Dragon It's roll, a little right? mild for mayo's taste. Dragon roll. The dragon roll is great. Dragon roll. All right. It's have you good. had the dragon roll? I've had, had it with us. I mean, not, we have it almost every I don't like anything with that, um, like that crab that ceramy thing you're looking at that down like i'm looking at that this has fish, uh, from that one you know doesn't have it this is just shrimp tempura and distract me with the sushi i'm in the middle of a contest so anyways are you did a clue number one yeah, right. you, did, you did a clue already number two this is the patented mayo clue okay <laughs> the one no one understands the convoluted one, yeah, the yeah. Convoluted yeah. one that i love all it right rhymes with <laughs> oh you talk about okay. like the opening day it's, and it's, the feeling you know how in the passover seder and the haggadah they mentioned the four sons the simple one yes, the wicked yeah, one the wise one right, the wicked yeah. there you go well the wise why son, do they always look at me when they mention the simple <laughs> one the whole <laughs> table uh, oh yeah, yeah cheer up thief <laughs> the wise son mentioned in the passover haggadah probably liked this eatery's name since it also describes the advice often given by Talmudic scholars and philosophers. Okay. How's right. that, that for a Mayo clue? Well, that was actually clue. useful. That's vintage Mayo, yeah. And here's another little clue. The restaurant also had the same name as a longtime beloved bygone French restaurant in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. That place was great. But the two like restaurants were completely unrelated. Yep. And fun fact about the French place in Fort Lauderdale, do you know who uh, was the chef in the kitchen there for a long time? Angelo Elian. You told us, right? Nope. No, he was. Who, no, it wasn't Angel. Who was it? Dang, you've told us. Uh, we know. Tom T. Let Tommy me, T. No, uh, let me give you a hint. Give me a clue. Give me a mayo clue. I don't want to say degenerate. Yeah. Horse racing enthusiast. Joey. And owner. Yes. Oh, yeah. Joey, Joey Esposito. Yeah, Esposito. Actually, adult. now the owner and not gracious. the highlight player, but the no. <laughs> Cafe Seville. Yeah, Joey Joey Esposito, Cafe Seville, before he bought that place with Sally and turned you know now he's like front of the house yeah yeah yeah. he was an accomplished chef and he worked under laurent 
at that other place in Fort Lauderdale. All right. Both great. Everybody should know. That place was good, man. They used to have a two-for-one entree night. Two-for-one uh, uh, crepes. Two-for-one crepes. Yeah, but, I mean, you could go in there and, oh, yeah, and get a really good meal for a very, very, uh, you know, sensible price. Yeah, that place was so great. So, used to go there quite frequently. Two places, place unrelated, have that same name. Both of them were great, actually. And, yeah. yeah. Let's just close it out that the... Uh, if the, you got here too early because you had to drop somebody off at the yep. airport, so you were at the track at like 11 o'clock and the <laughs> anthem was still an hour away, <laughs> this, this place that was around the corner from here was dynamite to right. hang out, yeah. It was. No. And the eatery here, uh, the bagel place, was founded in 1973 by the Furst family who moved from Queens. Uh, and uh, actually, Joanne chimed in earlier this week when we had that discussion about oh, using yeah, bring lye up. and you know pretzels or bagels oh, yeah, to yeah. give it that kind of browner, crunchier sheen. She said that Harvey Furst basically Sorry told her that. Did, they did use a little bit of the lye in the uh, boil Interesting. that uh, gave it the, the sheen. Uh, but again, uh, that was founded by the first, first family in 73. Another deli and bakery opened in the same spot a year later. Yes, and so cool. again, a familiar face from this original location can now be found nearby. Our friend Clive at Grandpa's oh, nice. Bagel yeah. and Deli was a longtime manager at this other place before now he is... Of course, doing a great job of slicing the bagels and slicing that no. That's a lot of clues, man. Thing. The people should have it by now. I mean, I really like people should. had a yeah. clue one. Overkill. Do so you want to say what it rhymes with, or maybe like <laughs> it rhymes that, with that, that? The last three letters of the word are it things that Tony with, and I are very uh, concerned about. It rhymes with another famous deli in New York that used to be near Broadway that yeah. is also now closed. Just remove a letter. Uh, there we go. How's that? More clues. Just keep piling on the clues. All right. So they got the restaurant. They got the restaurant. What else is there? Well, we what were the other, about the what the other race, time breakers? Okay. Numbers one through 11 and Gulfstream's fifth race tomorrow on the turf. Five furlongs on the perf. A furf. What's a furf? It's on the turf. On the and turf. It's, it looks to be a wide open race. We've got, uh, uh, looks like a five to two morning line favorite. Number one deflection by uh, this new trainer. I don't really know. He must have been an assistant. D'Angelo, uh, like Jose D'Angelo. Got a couple of Brendan Roy. Well, it's a wide open field. 11 horses, one through 11. Send it in. Along with what do you like in that Knicks Sixers game? You think uh, the Knicks? I, I think the, the Knicks, Knicks will win game home? one. I think the Sixers win the series in six. Mm -hmm. You think Embiid is going to? Uh, what about uh, the Heat tonight? No, we already discussed. Yeah, the we heat. said. I, I said think they're going down. I'm the only one that thinks the Heat win. Defoe would lean Heat, but if you put money on it, he would go Bulls. I don't think though. And you two like Bulls. I'm being a homer. I admit it. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> hey, you know what? We got a lot of business to take care of, so why don't we take our first break? And first, before we do, I want to give uh, you know a a props to uh, Batch Kitchen, yes. New Southern Kitchen and Tap in Fort Lauderdale. Week. You got to get Tony out. That place there. was great. Tony, I mean, that's Tony one thing. Will come, when we go to do a brunch, part of your mission. actually, I would love him to. When we do it, because Tony hasn't done there. the brunch yet either. We should all do a brunch. They do a really, they do a great brunch here, and they do a really good brunch at Batch. And you know, as good as this place is going to be, Ten Palms and Gulfstream during the Kentucky Derby Saturday. Well, they're doing uh, the whole thing, and they're doing a special event. You know, a little, you know, more uh, exclusive event, a little bit uh, premium pricing here in Ten Palms on Derby Saturday. But uh, Batch, they're big horse racing fans because hey, the whole theme is whiskey. the South whiskey, bourbon, Kentucky. Yep. So they're having some Derby fun at uh, Batch on that first Saturday of May, May fourth. They're going to actually be giving away a thousand dollar prize oh, yeah, at wow. each of their locations, including Fort Lauderdale. Nice uh, to anybody who hits the trifecta. And I don't know what happens if two people hit the trifecta in the Derby. But they're going to, I guess, maybe then go to the tiebreaker hat like we do. Yeah. But it's going to yeah, be a lot of fun. And I think maybe maybe that's the play. It's like go there, I have a say, short the day, there, and, and not here? have to, not well, maybe put a couple of shekels on my phone on the virtual betting yeah, and then get some free right. stabs at the trifectas. Uh, you know what? There's a lot of ways to go at it. But Batch is a great place to go on Derby Day or any day. They're open seven days with lunch and dinner along with the weekend brunches, which is a spectacular uh, they've got live music Wednesday through Sunday. They got their Whiskey Wednesdays, where they also have their whiskey education class. They're at 525 North Federal Highway. They've got free parking in the garage right next door. And uh, again, the food, the cocktails, the aura, the service, the vibe, as the people vibe. love to say nowadays, it's it's great, good vibe, especially outdoors. Get uh, you know, it's the still beautiful weather, breezy, yeah, beautiful. Been Go to take, batch, take advantage of it yeah, while you can, last, yeah. and tell them the lunchbox sent you. All right. All right. We'll be back with more on the Lunchbox after these words. Style slice. How about lunch specials for under nine bucks that come with garlic rolls and a fountain drink? 
I'm talking about Stromboli Pizza Kitchen in the Fountains of Plantation, 801 South University Drive. Since 1987, it's been home to Brooklyn-style pies and slices, heroes and paninis, pastas, and all your Italian-American favorites. It's got the unpretentious vibe of the pizza places of my youth with daily specials, family dinners, outdoor seating, eat-in, carry-out, or delivery. Open seven days a week. Go to strombolispizza.com to place your order today. Gilbert's 17th Street Grill. You know me. I love family-run places with quality food at fair prices served with passion and pride. And that's why I love Gilbert's. For more than a decade, Lenore, Beth, and Richie Gilbert have been serving up the best burgers, wings, ribs, salads, and desserts. It's a fast, casual spot. Everything prepared fresh to order from an immaculate open kitchen. They're at 1821 Cordova Road in Fort Lauderdale in the Cordova shops just south of 17th Street. Open every day but Sunday. One of my favorite burgers in South Florida. Big, round, juicy pucks of 100% Angus beef. Char-grilled to perfection. And don't miss the sweet potato fries on the side. They're legendary. Go to Gilbert's. Feast and be happy. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. When I'm looking for some wicked good food for a wicked good lunch, there's only one place to go. That's Wicked Cheesesteaks in Fort Lauderdale. It's at 4824 North Federal Highway, just south of Commercial Boulevard and across from Holy Cross Hospital. My friend Brian there, he will hook you up with some really tasty treats. They've got cheesesteaks just like the best you can find in Philly, along with lobster rolls, because that's where he's from, Maine originally. And they have wings and pizza and everything you want to have a really good time. Wicked Cheese steaks they're open every day but tuesday check them out online wickedcheesesteaks.com tell them the lunchbox sent you if you're looking for a great place for steaks seafood and more go to tropical acres steakhouse and butcher shop it's at 2500 griffin road in dania just west of i-95 in the airport they've been there a long time since 1949 that means they're doing something right You'll get old school hospitality from the Studiali family, along with great value for tremendous service. Of course, you could also go into the bar for happy hour every day, four to six, and they have great value all night long. Also, a butcher shop that's open every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., except Sunday. The dining room is open every day at 4 30, except Sunday. Go to Tropical Acres, tell them the lunchbox sent you. All right, we're back on the lunchbox. I am highly distracted today because I'm alive in the early double. I said I was going to hit it, and uh, let's see if it's possible. I've got four dollar doubles going with a nine to one shot to start. Uh, I'm sure nobody cares about this, no, but no I've got, I'm alive with <laughs> the two. Here, and we like racing and the betting. The two is at thirty four dollars for a buck. So uh, factor that out. I'm looking at one hundred thirty dollars if the two wins. And the three is $50. I've got four. That's 200 That's two sticks if there the three comes in. And it looks like those are the two. Up oh, the 10 is the chalk with Luca Panici. Is Luca going to burn me, Defoe? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to go when and run. Enemy loses when you don't bet him, he wins for fun. Yeah, he's so actually now, been on the show, too. If I go on and I have to throw like $10 on the nose on Luca to yep. kind of cover myself and just break even on the whole thing. Wow, they bet him down to six to five. Yeah, don't hedge at this point on the favorite. Might Come well on, man. It. You got to take a shot here. Yeah, go for it. You got it. Uh, you got a nine to one shot, home. You're, You're going to pick up a couple of hundred bucks. Why, why shouldn't I just like. What hedge? are you going to bet? 10 to one? Uh, I, I 10 to win? 10? Yeah, that just, way I get my money back. Just, just bet them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, just bet them all. You know what? You're right, Defo. I'm going to sink or swim with my pick. I, I wouldn't bet 10 on the favorite, though, to get 10 bucks back. Would you at this point? You're, well, you're looking I've, at making I've a score here. I put 10 into the race. Oh, uh, that's I it? Mean, oh, okay. I put 10 into the early doubles. So I could hedge and get that 10 back if Luca burns me. And I'm still looking at 130 or two sticks. If uh, Lucas, you know, uh, he, he's not the, the best on favorites. Uh, I don't like Luca at 30 to one more than I do at six to five. <laughs> yeah, I really isn't do. That funny. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. He's it's just one of those junkies. Some people, I guess, it's the same way. Like you like the. He's heat. as honest as they come, though. You're not going to get a Jonte Porter deal where you know, <laughs> Luca falls off the horse deliberately but takes a soft landing at the 16th pole. That's not happening. I hope or, not. or if you see it. It's the horse throw the rider and then the rider runs then the, the, the other way yeah yeah we don't like when that happens um i don't know what we got going on for this weekend besides the brunch bash which is a lot but that, anybody that got any lot. dining plans any kind of a new and exciting things on the agenda i'm gonna go get some sushi at zab where okay. you know um, that place is that on uh, Sheridan or Sterling or no? Where it's, is it? it's on 84. Okay. It's in the shopping center. 
it's right next door to where the Texas Roadhouse is going to be in five years or four years. Five well, years. Hopefully. That was yeah. amazing how long it takes, you know, from the planning stage to put a restaurant together. My While we God. were talking to uh, Ed Garcia of Texas Roadhouse the other day. But, like, from the time they give it a go, it's, like, still a couple-year process. Yeah, this is like millions this of dollars in investment. This is up it, and, and, and it's a place that's already there. It depends whether it's a turnkey where you're just buying a place that already went out or if you're building from scratch, especially some of these, you know, chains that have very specific, uh, you know, no. needs and specifications. And this was a restaurant. This now, was they a may restaurant. have to do okay. stuff, but he says it's a big space and it's a good space. So okay. I've already seen it. Yeah, it's interesting. And it's still, just to get through all the processes, he says it's, at least like a year and a half to two years. You got to get the zoning, the yep. planning boards, all permits, the bureaucracy, all that the permits, and then you actually got to deal with the contractors. Although, yep, I assume, uh, I assume a big outfit like uh, Texas Road. They have their own people, but still, they people. have it down to a science. I mean, they, they can calculate the days, but uh, it was interesting to hear. Yeah, what really kind of a process is involved in just you know what you would think would be a simple transaction? Open up another place. Nothing is easy these days. Yeah. Um, Florida. Hey, and. Uh, you know, speaking of sushi, of course we love our friend uh, so, Kui so this Tyson, place, but I was gonna oh, go ahead. This place is Zab Z A A B. On Saturday nights you can't get in. Mm -hmm. It's Good. eight o'clock, you can't get in. Did you pull a mayo and say I'm Tony Serrano? <laughs> I'm always there earlier. Oh, so right. I just sit at the bar. <laughs> it reminds me when you're talking about sushi that earlier this week, Luby, when you were gone, we were talking about the Michelin guide. So the new unveil of the 2024 edition of the florida mission michelin guide was announced last night in tampa nice. and there's a couple of newcomers to the list statewide again they only bestow well, they stars and award recognition uh, other things and include in the guide places that are in miami greater miami places that are in the orlando area and places that are in tampa so even if you're great in florida you have no yeah, shot because they only are going to places in the counties where the local tourist boards have kicked in money it's a little bit of a play wow, so that's yelpish. Play. Yeah, that's like yelpish. and a lot of, you know people in other areas are upset because obviously there's some very worthy restaurants around the state like it's fine for the idea of it, it does open up your mind to places but it just sort of sucks because People do take it as the end-all, be-all without knowing that, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, exactly. and I don't know where it stands. I do have to talk to Stacy Ritter, who's, of course, our friend. The Why don't we the kick in money then? Visit well, well, well that, that's the thing. I don't know if they've been approached or if Michelin has said no. You said no. This is a three-year cycle. I think Lauderdale might get involved because the, the original time. deal was through 24. So I think next year. You might see other counties start to get involved, including Lauderdale and Palm Beach County, which has some very upscale worthy yeah, restaurants. Yeah, yeah, our whole area has tons but of great restaurants. The new list was in, uh, basically unveiled. Most of the Miami places stayed the same. Two places dropped, and I think three more came on. But two of those three places, this brings me back to sushi, are these high-end omakase places wow. where you spend 250 or $300 per person for this elevated, you know, fancy exotic fish sushi experience. And to me, um, you know, the knock for a lot of years on Michelin Guide was that there's too many European and fancy French places. Now the knock on it is they've fallen in love with these high-end Japanese sushi omakase places. And uh, there's not really a good mix or balance in terms of price points and all that. And I think you could have really excellent food in doesn't have to be the fanciest place in the you, world. You can have excellent food in Zob or, or, or some other place. Kaizen. Well, Kaizen's, yeah. Well, the Kaizen's I, Okamakasi is, uh, I, you know, along the lines of anything you get at some of those yeah. Michelin it's, star it's places. It's, it's just a little bit. It's just the, the atmosphere, you know, it's not it's not a, a $3 million build out or it's not like some hidden tunnel where you have to use a passcode to get in and find the counter with just <laughs> you get three portions and you actually leave full yeah exactly right? yeah um so again the new michelin guide is out i'm not going to go down the whole list again yeah. in the entire state of florida uh there is only one two-star restaurant again the way they have one star two star three stars that's their rating system three stars are like do you have like, how many class. are there like just a couple dozen of three stars in the entire world. I believe. I don't know what the count is, but you're right. It's very select and limited. Like under 40. And something. by the way, I happened to eat at one of them uh, just last month. Le Bernardin oh, in New York is a, is a three star. star. And it was absolutely fast, fantastic experience. Yeah. Uh, not life changing, but life affirming. Because that's it. Okay. Uh, so Michelin, does it necessarily mean high, high, high level? Because to me, we've doing the show, everything found great quality. 
in all different levels. So right. Michelin to me should describe well, great it, restaurants, it seems, not great yeah, high levels. They they take into account both service and atmosphere as much as the food itself. Although that, and but again, are, even Keel has dis- great service and great atmosphere, right. and it, you don't leave yeah, like, oh my god, I can't at- pay my mortgage this they month. They say atmosphere, and and they're so full of it because they just say the only thing that matters to them is the level and originality of the mm-hmm. cooking. I don't buy that because if you look at the price points everywhere, it's just, all the same. It's all the fancier places, um, although not necessarily all of them. Boy, a day but again, as we've seen, but, a lot of high-level chefs will leave that place right. to start their own, but they're still high-level chefs. Everyone we right. work with has been under some of the greatest chefs in the world, and they themselves are accredited, but they've moved on. So why are they not? It's like they've lost that acclaim because they're not at you know the Marriott, it's, or it's the Ritz a, Carlton. It's there, a mysterious there, process. There can be. There can be. A hole in the wall place. Yeah, you've had the best food you've ever had, it, and it's the best. Yeah, the best food you've ever had. No, I've like I've around had. the world, they're like that. We went to Thailand because, and it was in the early days of TikTok. It might have been actually before TikTok. I think it was like we. Were, oh no, we watched a Netflix, and they were went like to places around the world, and there was this like it would be a food cart here, but it was just a stand in Thailand. And this woman made these omelets, but you know, this with crab and they, she made like four things and on, it got on Netflix and it got a Michelin star, but it was, and it was expensive as hell because she had a Michelin star and the line was four hours, but it was literally like the four tables. Right. And you took it to go. So it wasn't like a hoity toity okay. and she got a Michelin so star. I guess they maybe have opened it up to more diverse uh, places that aren't as hoity toity. Yeah. But again, once you get that star, people come flocking. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't know. I think the final total of number of Michelin starred restaurants in Florida is in the 30s. Okay. But the only one that has two stars, which is that you know higher level than a one star, is that uh, Le Atelier de Joël Rubachon. Oh, it's talk- in Midtown Miami. It's named after a famous French chef who is no longer with us. Uh, he actually died like three months before the Miami out. Post open, oh, wow. so it's like you got these global high end chains essentially. Uh, now, well, places does, does Burns get noticed? So, Burns, like Joe Stonecrab, does not get awarded a Michelin star, even though in my mind, both of them should because yep. they're places of local distinction that do excellent do jobs at job, what yeah. they do. And the prices are actually but not their so food bad. is not considered creative enough for the <laughs> snotty, <laughs> snooty French oh, people behind the Michelin <laughs> guy, whoever their raiders are. They have a whole listing. They have other places included in the guide of noteworthy places that aren't awarded stars. Stars. That's where Joe's Stone Crab falls in. That's where Burn Steakhouse. But they're letting you know they should in. have a star, but we don't know what to do with them. So here's something for them. Yeah. Well, it's just again they have these other things called the Bib Gourmand, which is high level places that aren't exactly up to the same standards as a Michelin starred place that are okay. also they say has good value with good food. Yeah. I still don't understand all the distinctions. They still need to fill their guidebook, which I don't know if they sell it in physical form anymore. Uh, but uh, you know, they have to fill it with something. They can't just have like three places, yeah, exactly. <laughs> two sheets of paper like this. So uh, they, they stock it full of, you know, Places that have been around for a while. Yeah, do a good job. Hey, speaking of that, how about Tropical Acres? If uh, there yeah. was, if they would ever come to um, Broward County, I yeah, would I say haven't. Tropical Acres would be a place of distinction. Maybe a Bib Gourmand because you got great value. Yeah, coming from and that history. place, which is celebrating its 75th anniversary this month. It's unbelievable. But uh, again, through the generations, it's one of the constants. 2500 Griffin Road, the Studio Alley family now, they've taken over since the 60s from their cousins, the Harveys, that originally owned it in 1949. They're great. They're um, fabulous. They do a great job. Uh, you're going to go in there, go for happy hour in the bar, 4.30 to 6.30, Monday through Friday. You can go in there tonight. It's going to be a little hard getting in because it is like, you know, four deep at the bar when they Nothing open like for it. the happy hour. Half Nothing price like drinks, it. great, uh, you know, light bites. Then you can go into the dining room, get your classics, the prime rib and the filet mignon don't forget mother's day coming up sunday may 12th yeah. you want to get in the books there you got to give them a call old-fashioned style give them a call 954-989-2500. they like picking up the phone right they like yeah, they're very old they school, write down great. the reservations on a yellow legal pad they got it all plotted out it's a very old school there but and they're I very love systematic that. it's not like it's an yep. addition and they'll take great care of you again tropicalacres.com give them a call for mother's day or any day they're open Six days a week, every day but Sunday, 
954-989-2500. Tom, the Lunchbox sent you. All right, we'll come back with more on the Lunchbox after these words. When the Brooklyn boy in me wants a good bagel with Nova or some matzo ball soup, homemade knishes, or a great deli pastrami sandwich on rye, you know where I go? Grandpa's Cafe in Dania Beach. It's been around a long time, an institution, but a little over a year ago, a pair of New Yorkers came in, bought it, and refurbished the place. It's beautiful, and they are now serving great breakfast, brunch, lunch. They've got the omelets. They've got Eggs Benedict. They've got all kinds of great baked goods like Ruggler. Grandpa's is just off Federal Highway on Southwest 1st Street in Dania Beach. It's open seven days. Go in there. Tell them that the lunchbox sent you. When people come to me and say, Mike, where should I go out to eat? I got guests coming from out of town. Where should we go? Cafe Seville. That's the answer. 2768 East Oakland Park Boulevard. It's a Fort Lauderdale perennial. Serving the finest in Spanish and continental cuisine in a cozy, friendly, comfortable setting. Joey Esposito and Sally, his better half, they've been running the place for a long time. It's been open since the 1980s. They got great Spanish classics like paella, shrimp with garlic sauce and all kinds of great seafood dishes. The stuffed veal chop, oh, that's my favorite. Go to Cafe Seville. It's open every day but Sunday at 5 p.m. for dinner. Tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defo sent you. Do you like burgers? Do you like wings? Do you like late night food and sports on big screen TVs and cold beer and friendly vibe and great people? Then you want to check out Shenanigans, 1300 South Federal Highway in Dania Beach. Go to Shenanigans, you get yourself all the good stuff, the fresh fish every day, the black and grilled wings, and of course the kitchens are open late. Go there, tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defo sent you. A sophisticated setting. I'm talking about Corvina Seafood Grill. It's at 110 Plaza Real South in Boca Raton, just south of Palmetto Park Road. It's the place to go for the freshest and local seafood and fish, some of it with a Peruvian twist like their great ceviches. It's open seven days for dinner. They also have happy hours seven days a week. You don't want to miss it. It's a great place. CorvinaBocaRaton.com for more information and reservations. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. We're back. Caught me unawares. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting some of this uh, good. One of the specials today is a crab and shrimp fried rice. And uh, Luby, Defo, and Tony have been singing the praises. It's I've been really trying good. to stay really away good. from my car. Very nice. Very nice. And uh, about to dive in there. Uh, speaking of seafood, I'm going to make a little sojourn tonight to a new hot spot in Hollywood, this J&C Oyster that opened up just a few weeks ago. I'm going with some friends. And uh, we're going to so go how check long, it out. So how long has it been opened? About three weeks. They're in so their third week. So what do you week. do, Mike Mayo, as a guy who said, I don't go anywhere in less than two months, when you do go to somewhere that's less than a month? Well, here's the thing. Expectation-wise. Expectation-wise, I am prepared for Anything? some roughness around <laughs> the Friday edges night <laughs> on a Friday night. Yeah. On a Friday. However, How many people? Uh, what? With, how, how many people are you gonna go? With? Just uh, three. We got. Okay. It's a nice fourth. That's my perfect number. I don't know what everybody else uh, thinks, but two couples. You're, you perfect. can converse with each other. You, everybody sees each other across the table. Uh, but yeah, we're going in there about uh, seven o'clock. And that's a, that's a good time. The chef Raheem Seely, uh, I know from his time at Q Restaurant downtown Miami. And then he opened his own pop up barbecue called Drinking Pig Barbecue, that was really highly acclaimed. Uh, during the pandemic, and it was just at the end of a block in North Miami, at the end of a cul-de-sac. It was a, uh, it was a wild setup. And they just kind of set up a tent, and they had a smoker, and people would come, and it was outdoors, and it was safe, and it was beautiful product. But Raheem's very talented, and he's go- doing some good stuff with seafood. Uh, and uh, I've heard nothing but good things from people that I respect uh food wise and they other people went in in the opening weekend and said they were blown away by the menu and the food so nice you know again i know that things might they might not be the most perfect experience in the first month but i'm willing to try it at this point at least you've you've heard good yeah so that you know would make you think that you have a shot at it being a good experience and it's down on harrison street in hollywood which uh you know it's been kind of i don't use the great area too but they've had some good restaurants there. They all seem to inevitably, you know, they don't last as long as I would like. And this one I want to last a long time because uh, having a talented guy like Raheem uh, 
yeah. in my neighborhood is something that is uh, quite, quite good. Uh, all right. Well, they're about to go on the gate. Do we need to take one more break? or We have one more break in well, there if you want to, so you can Yeah, I could be, be a, a complete degenerate. But, <laughs> uh, let me uh, just talk about real quickly before we get there. We'll talk okay, so about I looked, I, I know you brought up this Visit Lauderdale. Yeah, the burger. The thing, which nice looks fun. I will say I couldn't find it on their site, so I know you were sort of sending people there. You right. also gave the info. Right. Uh, so And it sounded a lot of fun, and I'm trying to promote the heck out of it because we love Visit Lauderdale, and we also love the Burger Beast. We're trying to get back in his good graces because you ruined everything. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm prone to uh, do that. I want to make sure we get the word out for anything. Burger Beast, we love you. We that love is. you, Burger Beast. So the, the website is... Uh, 954burgermonth.com. Okay. It'll show you the various events lined up. National Burger Month is May. National Burger Day, I believe, is the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. That's logical enough. But yes. this year, the folks at the Visit Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival uh, have decided to embrace the burger locally with the 954burgermonth.com website. May 1st, there'll be a big burger bash at Lauderdale Brewery. That's near the port in uh, Fort Lauderdale. And then on the 19th, on a Sunday, uh, they're going to be in at Friends at uh, Gilbert's. So they, it is the go. I know Lenore was a little thrown off no, by that. It, it, That's it's still going up there. Down. Burger Beast, uh, a big fan and friend of the Gilbert's. He's like family. They're going to be. It's a ticketed event on a day they're usually closed that Sunday, May 19th. Nice. Also happens to be my daughter's gra daughter's graduation day. So, so I'm not going to be, be able to make that. But, <laughs> uh, but again, a bunch of events. Go on to that 954burgermonth.com. And at some point, VLFoodWine, I would presume, have it as well. VLFoodWine.com. You can go on there and get your early bird tickets for next year's grand tasting. I went on there this morning. Still half price tickets available. It's a great nice. deal. Just 75 bucks to get into the grand tasting next January for all that great food and wine. VIP pricing also half priced. Nice. So go on to vlfoodwine.com to get your early bird tickets for the festival next January and go to 954burgermonth.com for your Burger Month festivities. And they're off here. We're going to be off in a couple of minutes. But uh, for now, let's take our last break of the day on the Lunchbox. An exquisite sushi experience. Kaizen Sushi Bar and Grill in Fort Lauderdale is the place to go. 5640 North Federal Highway, just north of Commercial Boulevard. Chef owner Hui Lam, he's a sushi savant, slicing and serving pristine fish and seafood flown in directly from Japan and around the world. Nigiri, sashimi, special rolls, and omakase dinners. He's ruined me from going anywhere else. It's that good. Open seven days for dinner and also for lunch. Even if you're not a sushi fan, they have great cooked options, including steaks, chops, rice and noodles, and other Japanese dishes. It's fantastic. For reservations and information, go to kaizenflorida.com. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. Delicious Mexican food with innovative twists. Margaritas with a medley of tongue-tingling flavors. I'm talking about Taco Craft, Taqueria, and Tequila Bar. The place to go on Taco Tuesday and every day. It's located at 510 North Federal and Highway in Fort Lauderdale and also in Lauderdale-by-the-Sea at Plantation Walk and soon in Coral Springs. Taco Craft has specials every day, including bottomless drinks for a Sunday brunch and Taco Tuesdays with their $4 premium tacos, including their new Berea tacos with bone marrow broth. Oh, it's so good. They've even made a taco lover out of me, and they've got so much more, including fajitas, that open face smashed cheeseburger tortilla that's new, and a guacamole sample that's an explosion of flavors. Kitchen is open late. There's delivery and takeout. For more information, go to tacocraft.com. Tell them Mike Mayo, the lunchbox. From a scratch kitchen, delicious drinks and house made spirits from a craft bar, a great vibe inside and out with a spacious patio. I'm talking about Batch New Southern Kitchen and Tap, Fort Lauderdale, in the heart of the city at 525 North Federal Highway. It's open seven days for lunch, dinner, and weekend brunch with classics like fried chicken and waffles and shrimp and grits and creative items like pecan-crusted salmon and a fried green tomato BLT. And the drinks? Smooth sipping and so good. There's convenient free parking and a garage next door, happy hour at the bar, an entire patio, 4 to 7, Monday to Friday, and live music every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's pet and people friendly and with cozy fire pits for when the temperature dips. 
For reservations and more information, go to BashSouthernKitchen.com. Hey, it's Mayo here for Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. Since 1951, for over 70 years, the home of freshness. I've been a customer for over three decades, and it's the place to go for poultry, steaks, meats, and, of course, their unbelievable selection of fish and seafood. They've got it all. Key West pink shrimp, grouper, snapper, lobster, and, of course, Florida stone crab claws of all sizes. Don't forget their famous fish dip and a full selection of prepared foods. It's located at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood, just across from the Seminole Classic Casino. Doug Carter and crew will take great care of you. Make sure to check out their weekly specials and daily catch online at DelawareChicken.com. Quality, value, freshness, that's the Delaware way. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. If you like seafood in a comfortable setting, outdoors, even keel fish shack at the corner of A1A and Commercial Boulevard in Lauderdale by the Sea, and also now with a new location on Las Olas Boulevard. Those are my spots. Upscale food and a down-home setting. The chef owners, Dave and Brad, do a terrific job with all the seafood classics that you want. They have the best grilled oysters in town, bang-bang shrimp, lobster rolls, and daily fish specials. They also have weekend brunch Saturday and Sunday. They have daily happy hour, 4 to 7. And they also have other weekly specials like mussels on Monday and oysters on Tuesday. Go to Even Keel Fish Shack and tell them that the Lunchbox sent you. Yeah, that is a good question. Where's Joe Bezier? Oh, <laughs> hey, we're back on the Lunchbox. <laughs> Where's Waldo? Where's Joe Bezier? credit. I, he did... I Good point. Thank you. Usually we are joined by uh, Gulfstream's executive director of food and beverage, Joe Beja. But he uh, texted me right at showtime to let me know he got called into a last minute meeting. Which I'm sure he's always excited about that. Something never anybody <laughs> wants to do on a Friday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> so Joe sends his regrets, but he does You're want everybody Joe. to know that besides our lunchbox brunch. Well, oh, they're doing a meal thing next week, right? They're doing um, a taste of the track. On the 27th of April, next Saturday, they're going to be having their uh, Caribbean rum. Uh, it's like perfectly time for Caribbean my trip from food. the Dominican Republic. Go on to gulfstreampark.com slash events and you get your tickets there for the both the Caribbean rum <laughs> festival event on April 27th, along with the Derby Day tickets. Uh, you can get your, uh, I guess, they're having two things on Derby Day. Number one, you can come here to Ten Palms. They have a... Uh, I guess they call it elevated buffet. Uh, and number two, they're also having something up on the third floor Flamingo Room where it's that uh, wine. Uh, they're going to be having a nice bunch of wines along with some light bites uh, up there. Also on Derby Day, first Saturday in May, May 4th. All right, speaking of the Derby, has anybody looked at the field? Uh, anybody have any thoughts yet? Nobody. I, I haven't looked at the I'm field going to win at just all. The forest. Well, it's a matter of <laughs> fierceness. The Kentucky. I'm oh, sorry. That's true. Is there anyone that's supposed to compete with fierceness? Yeah. Uh, Sierra Leone. Okay. So uh, right now it looks like, uh, you know, the, all the buzz is going to two horses. Fierceness, who won the Florida Derby in very impressive style. 13 lengths on the front end, unchallenged. Uh, and that's trained by Todd Pletcher, owned by Mike Rapoli, and uh, ridden by Irat Ortiz Jr. And uh, the other horse that looks to be the big gun is Sierra Leone, which is uh, all trained by Chad Brown. Mm -hmm. And he was a very impressive closer finish, you know, from last to first winner of the Bluegrass Stakes at Keeneland. See, that means more to me than leading from the beginning. Okay. You know, coming up from the rear. Well, don't they usually fall back? I mean, you guys know more than me, but you don't usually want to get out. Derby styles vary from year to year. However, it is notori notoriously difficult to win on the front end of the Derby because usually there's some speedball rabbits that are placed in the race by the other connections of horses that. that have closers. Yep. So the question is, is Fierceness so good that he could just get to the Damn. front and brush off all comers? And again, a lot can happen when you have a 20-horse field. And where, where, depending on his post position, too. Yeah, he'd, he'd get knocked Make around in all, in, yeah. all kinds of places. If he draws the rail, forget it, because yes. you can't really win from the rail. No one's ever won derby. from the rail, right? Isn't that the whole thing? Uh, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. And then, of course, you've got uh, you know some of the other contenders. But with with Sierra Leone, the the question is, yeah, as a closer, you also run the risk of getting traffic trouble and yeah, bumped that, and jostled. That's, that's true. And can you work out a trip? 
Uh, these things will be revealed in a few weeks yeah. at uh, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Churchill Downs. It is the most exciting two minutes of racing. But, you know, there's always there's always a dark horse that's, yep. that comes in and wins it. And it could be uh, – I don't know if Joe Orsano is going to get his Hades horse in there. I don't know if he got enough points. The field is still not all determined. 20 horses. It'll be a cavalry charge. I know the wise guys are talking. Oh, it's, 20, it's up to 20 horses? Yeah, 20 Holy horses crap. make the field. The wise guys are going a little bit on this horse that won in Dubai, the uh, uh, UAE uh, Dubai Derby, Japanese bred horse. I forgot the name. He won for fun there a couple of weeks ago, but these – Dubai horses, you know, you don't know what they're beating over there, even if they look like champs. <laughs> um, but again, the Japanese have been doing very well on the international stage. So you can be on the lookout that a Japanese horse might win the Kentucky Derby. And then the other question is Shug McGahey, old time Kentucky hard boot. Uh, he has Conquest Warrior, who's supposed to be a brilliant horse, but he looks to be a little slow developing and he just might be too slow. For this field overall but again these questions will be answered in two weeks from today yes uh that's gonna do it for this week on again, the contest box. mike mayo at gmail.com yeah or if you want to be a late entry into the brunch bash uh, that would be here sunday mike mayo eats let me know by today so joe beja is not scrambling to put tables together <laughs> at the last minute all right uh we'll see everybody again on monday with a home show tony segreto nice. thank you very much everybody My pleasure else. Have a great weekend. And, uh, again, we'll talk about Passover on Monday. Yeah. It starts Monday night. Get that bread in there, though, Luke. I'm going to be doing just that. Just shoveling. Hey, that. He's, got, he's got some crostini right here. <laughs> he's getting all the leavened wheat that he can get. All right. Until uh, Monday. Great eating all weekend, everybody. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. And enjoy every sandwich.